Is the Sony A93's base ISO of 250 a deal breaker? I was there in New York City when Sony announced this exciting new camera, the world's first with a global shutter full frame image sensor. And I could tell you that the buzz in the room was electric. YouTubers, journalists, and everything in between were excited to get their hands on the camera to test it out and hopefully be the first to find the Achilles heel of this new technology. There's a lot of great videos about the benefits and advantages of global sensors, so I'm not gonna get into that. I'll leave some links in the description for you to check out. But what I've seen come on the heels of this announcement are the detractors that are hyping up the fact that the A93's native base ISO is 250 and not 100 as it is on some other cameras. Many mirrorless cameras offer extended ISOs that go down to 50, while the A93's goes to 125. I've seen some people on social media pointing at that native ISO of 250 being that hole in its armor and basically discrediting all of the other insane features that this camera brings to the table. Looking at this topic objectively, there are a few reasons why anyone would need the native ISO settings to be less than 250. We'll talk about those and if there are others, I'll invite you to leave a comment on this video so that we could continue that conversation. So why would anyone need an ISO less than 250? The first one that comes to mind as someone who uses a flash for photography is when you're shooting outdoors. In bright daylight conditions, many photographers will shoot with the lowest base ISO, and sometimes they will even shoot at the lower extended ISOs in order to get a darker exposure before they add their flash. This also becomes more of an issue when you're wanting to shoot at a wide open aperture like f1.4, since the only other variables that you have to give you the exposure that you want is the ISO and the shutter speed. What many of those folks are missing here is that the A93 has up to a 1 80,000th of a second shutter speed that syncs with a flash. This means that while you can't lower your exposure by going from ISO 250 to 100 or less, you could create that darker exposure by compensating with your shutter speed. It's understandable that some people might miss this point given the fact that there isn't another camera on the market that will let you shoot with a flash at anything above 1 8,000th of a second, and that's using high-speed sync, not the native tech that's built into a camera like the A93. If you're a photographer that uses low and extended ISOs with a flash, you're actually able to shoot at ISO 250 and just raise up your shutter speed to give you the exposure you want. The next reason I could think of that someone might want those lower ISO settings are for long exposures in bright conditions. I don't do very much long exposure photography, so feel free to chime in on this in the comments, but most of the time people are using ND filters to allow them to get those slower shutter speeds. We're talking a stop and a third difference from ISO 250 to 100, and that's pretty easy to bridge by using a little more ND to get you the same exposure and ultimately give you all of the other benefits that this global shutter brings. I suppose the most common thing that people might be thinking about is that ISO 250 is going to have more grain or noise than ISO 100, and on some older DSLR cameras, that might have been a valid point. One of the reasons that I made the move way back in 2014 to shooting with Sony mirrorless cameras was the ability to get cleaner images at those high ISOs, especially compared to DSLRs that were the standard at the time. On most Sony cameras that I've used in the past six years, I would regularly walk around in daylight shooting at ISO 400, and not once have I ever had someone tell me that my images look noisy or grainy. This might sound insane to some of you, but almost every single image that I have on my website or that I post on social media, it actually has grain added to the photo in post-production. I might actually make a video just on that topic pretty soon, but the bottom line here is that when a camera maker sets their base native ISO, that's going to be the setting that gives you the cleanest images that that sensor can produce. Some cameras even have what's called a dual base ISO that comes into play when you're shooting video. And that second ISO might be something really high like 12,800. 
On some cameras, ISO 12800 would have a lot of noise, but on those cameras that have a dual base ISO, that setting actually cleans up a lot of the noise that might be present at something like, say, 8000 ISO. Are you using lower ISO settings for any other reason than the ones that I mentioned in this video? Let's talk about it some more in the comments. I could tell you that from my experiences so far, and that's hands-on experience with the camera, the A93 is the genesis of a technology that is gonna be the standard for all digital cameras within the next seven to 10 years. It's gonna be an absolute beast for sports and wildlife photographers when it comes out in spring of 2024 and potentially for photographers who use flash like me.